All right, guys. Hey, cheers and welcome to the water cooler. It's, I know you're talking live on the air here, Chris. It's great Love to be it. back. The water cooler is a show about marketing, sales, and technology. Each episode, we focus on bringing you advice that works. You can tune in live on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash curator.com, spelled out. You can join the conversation with hundreds of real estate agents. You can watch the replay and all of our old episodes on YouTube and on iTunes. Uh, my name is Jimmy Mack, and I'm joined by my main man, best-selling author of The Conversion Code, Chris Smith. And we got a jam-packed session for you today, Chris. We're going to be covering topics on uh, retargeting that works, We'll talk mm -hmm. about how to win more listings and appease needy sellers. We're gonna dive into the art of newsjacking. We're gonna get into this concept of leveraging the contrarian mindset. And finally, we're gonna share with you guys our favorite Facebook feature of the week. But before we get into any of that, Chris, you know, mm -hmm. it's, been a, it's been a lot has changed since we've been off the air. Uh, one of the things that's changed is we've seen this rise in addiction to work. Where mm -hmm. in our industry in particular, Chris, uh, people are, it's widely accepted that working 24 seven, seven days a week is, is, is sort of the norm, right? Uh, we're starting to see some pushback from this and I, and I want you to start the show off giving me a sense of, you know, your feelings towards this and talk about this now famous email sent by Elon Musk that I think encapsulates this entire idea. Yeah, well, it's definitely great to be back. You know, it's been two years and we've been watching, we've been observing, we've been seeing what's happening in the industry and we're mm -hmm. pumped to be back. So for all the fans and all of our friends that supported our relaunch, thank you guys so much. It is an exciting time, but it, it makes me think of a saying, Jimmy, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. I have no idea who said that, but it was a great quote. And it's kind of like what you mentioned, hustle culture. Yeah. Two years ago, three years ago, when we were doing the show, everybody was all in on hustle, grind, work your face off, outwork. Like, yeah. And what's happened is there's been some pushback to that because if something goes too far to one side, people tend to try to bring it back. So if we can pull up the, the slide, there was an email that Elon Musk sent mm -hmm. and he sent it at 1.20 in the morning okay. and he sent it to all of his employees at Tesla. And he basically laid off 7% of them. Yep. And in this email, he said, if you want work-life balance, you're at the wrong company. We're trying to change the world. We're trying to put a dent in the universe. And let me read you the exact quote that he had. Succeeding in our mission is essential to ensure that the future is good. Okay. So we must do everything we can to advance the cause. Mm -hmm. I mean, does that, does that not sound like some in, entitled bullshit. I mean, quite frankly, like I get it that they're working on big goals, but yeah. Silicon Valley is really, I think where a lot of this started. There was actually another article in the New York Times, you know, Gary V has been the poster boy for hustle, mm -hmm. but there's been a lot of pushback against that as well. Like th this is crazy, Jimmy, let me read you this one. The, the CEO of Yahoo, yeah. Marissa Mayer in 2016, she explained how working 130 hours a week was possible. Yep. All you have to do is be strategic about when you sleep, when you shower, and how often you go <laughs> to the bathroom. Like, I want to grow curator and I love my job, but I'm not wearing the pens as a strategy. <laughs> that I, is not a strategy. <laughs> so like things have changed and mm -hmm. work-life balance has become a more important topic. I can tell you that all the millennials that we employ, it matters to them. Yeah. I can tell you that most normal people care about relationships and work. They care about their kids and their craft. And uh, it's funny, like one of our favorite people that a lot of people don't follow, DHH. Yeah. Uh, he's the CEO, one of the co-founders of Basecamp. And he said, the problem with the hustle culture is the vast majority of the people beating the drums are not the ones doing the work. They're the yeah. managers, they're the owners. So there's been a lot of pushback and you know, I think about the ultimate like workaholic with Steve Jobs. You know, Steve Jobs, you know, is notorious for working his butt off and making sure everybody else does too. And he got interviewed by Walter Isaacson in, in the famous book. Uh, it's like a thousand page book. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically Walter asked him, he said, are you glad that you have kids? And he said, having kids is 10,000 times better than anything I've ever done. That's Steve Jobs. Yeah. That's the person we all look up to. So for me, Jimmy, it's pretty clear, like 
What do you want on your tombstone? That's the way I think about it. Would anybody in their right mind want their tombstone to say, I worked 18 hours a day? Would anybody on their tombstone want it to say, grinded his face off? Mm -hmm. Would anybody want to be hustle mania on their tombstone? Like, I know for me, like, I would rather my tombstone say that I was a great father, a great husband, a great friend, a great colleague, a great philanthropist, and a great businessman. Yeah. So I just think that there, there has to be a voice of reason. And in fact, I mean, we want to know from our audience right now, this is one of the new features one of the new interactive features of the water cooler, we have a poll up right now on our Curator Instagram. Okay. I want everybody to go to Curator on Instagram right now, mm -hmm. click on our stories, and we want to know from you, the water cooler viewers, do you identify as a workaholic or do you identify as work-life balance? And we're going to actually get that data in real time. And we are going to reveal the results at the end today, Jimmy. Yeah. So let me ask a follow-up question to that, because I think, I think oftentimes you find people falling into one of those two camps, the mm -hmm. Jason Freed, DHH, let's, let's have a calm company camp, or you have the Elon Musk, which is, or Marissa uh, Mayer, sacrifice everything for the greater good. So mm -hmm. the, the thought though is, if you're watching right now the water cooler, Chris, and you are in a position where your business isn't going well, things mm -hmm. are, you're not hitting your goals, or maybe you're just starting, starting the year off, you maybe change brokerages, and you know, you, you know, when that happens, obviously you kind of stop selling, stop marketing, and stop growing. Is there a time and place where workaholics, you know, or, or working 24 seven makes sense? Or is it sort of this thing where like, you're just developing a bad habit that's gonna exist for, with you for your entire time running a business? Yeah, I think there's a medium, you know, I think that's what people are after is that balance. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like if you're first starting out and you're broke and you don't have any money and you don't have anything in your bank account, like that goes back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't have food and shelter, you have to do 100% of your time finding food and shelter. Yeah. But there's a point where, yeah, you get past that. And I would say for us, like part of it's you get a little older, you get a little wiser, you get a little calmer, yeah. you have a couple of kids, they get a little older, you grow, you mature, you change. You know, that's what a lot of this episode's about. Things have changed since we've been gone and we've changed too. Yeah. So I, I think ultimately, Jimmy, here's my problem with workaholics. They're usually very inefficient with how they work. Mm -hmm. So what I was thinking more about is how can I get more hours out of the hours I should work? How do I get more minutes out of the minutes I should work? I believe that most people listening right now are wasting half their hours each day anyway, chatting it up in the office, doing a bunch of stuff that doesn't really make them any money, kind of making excuses of not what not to do. Yeah. For me, like I definitely am at the point where I lean a little bit work-life balance. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like if you have a big deadline or a big speech or you've got a big conference or you've got a big thing, like work your ass off leading up to that. Yeah. But I don't yeah. think that it should be a lifestyle. I don't think that Monday to Monday should be a thing. Yeah. And uh, uh, Jason, David referred to it as the 12 hour work week, which is you go mm -hmm. right through the weekend and you're kicking off Monday. And I think your point there is well taken, Chris, this idea that working hard or working long hours does not equate to output. And the only thing you really should be thinking about is your output. How, what are you actually producing? What are you actually uh, creating? Now, that's just one trend. The mm -hmm. other trend that you're seeing right now, Chris, since we've been gone, and this one I think is pervasive in our industry right now, and that's fear. So we're having people who are working long hours, trying to figure things out, who are ultimately kind of sacrificing their health, their mindset, their businesses because some guru is telling them to work 24 seven. But the other thing that I think our industry and our audience is, is dealing with right now is, uh, is all of this negative news and all of this negative press that's, I think, screwing up with our mindset in a big way. Talk to me about that if you could. Yeah, it's, it's really just comes down to the big trend that I've seen in the last couple of years is FOMO. People are afraid of missing out. Mm -hmm. They're just afraid in general. Like if you think about the changes that have happened, like the market is changing. The president might get impeached. Yeah. We are in an economy that could collapse. Open Door and Zillow are buying people's houses without an agent. Mm -hmm. Like that's happening. Yeah. And the market, and then think about Facebook, all the fear around the data breach and the scandal, right? Yeah. Like ultimate, oh, by the way, here's another big trend. Compass, people going to EXP, you know, people changing brokerages, right? Mm -hmm. So think about that for a second. You've got all these things that you could be afraid of. Am I gonna miss out by not switching companies? Should I stop doing Facebook? Is it not gonna work? Is the economy and the market gonna collapse? Who cares? Because you don't have control over most of that. 
And here's the thing that I want people to remember. When you're not, uh, when you're afraid, you're not focused. And mm -hmm. when you're not focused, you're not productive. And when you're deciding what to do, you haven't decided. Yeah. So if you're going to switch, switch, quit thinking about it. When you're wondering, you're not working. I love the quote from Zig here. Fear has two meanings. Forget everything and run or face everything and rise. Mm -hmm. The choice is yours. So there's so much FOMO. There's so much running around in circles. If you actually spend your time and effort on things you can't control and your thoughts, you're, you're pretty much going to lose for sure. Yeah. There's a lot of great quotes, Jimmy, about fear. I, I pulled a couple quotes from Mark Twain. I have had a lot of worries in my life, most of which never happened. Yeah. Like, you know, we just get caught up in our head. Here, here's another great one. Worry never robs someone of its sorrow. It only saps today of its joy. Here's another one. Worry often, uh, worry often gives small things a big shadow. I love that one. And here's, here's the one that wraps it up. If you want to test your memory, try to recall what you were worrying about a year ago. Mm -hmm. So it feels like in the moment that these things are kind of crashing on around us, but it's just quite simply, Jimmy, not true. Yeah. It, it's one of those things that uh, fear is not an option. Fear is not a strategy. You could be concerned. You can keep an eye on what's happening, but you can't allow it to cause inaction. Yeah. Well, what's what's I? And you, you guys might be wondering what is a show about marketing, technology, and sales talking about fear and talking about uh, workaholics? I think th these are just. I think Chris, if you're going to hear anything on the Warcoal, you have to have the right mindset above yep. everything else. And I think there's a wonderful quote by, I think it's R R Ralph Waldo Emerson, where he says, uh, nothing great in life was accomplished without enthusiasm. And I think that is the mindset we all wanna have, is that you can either be afraid of things or you can approach these challenges with enthusiasm. I know, Chris, I, the type of people that we work with, one of our, one of our uh, core values as part of our culture code is stay positive. And yep. that, that's at the heart of what we try to do because you have the option, it's in your control how you react to these things and ultimately stop wasting your time thinking about things you can't control. Again, whether the president's gonna get impeached, the economy's gonna tank, or if you know, Zuckerberg's gonna get ousted from Facebook and they're gonna replace him with some other drone. So let, let's- yeah. <laughs> let, If you can be calm amidst the chaos, you're gonna yeah. win. Yeah. If you can be focused, amongst the fear, you're gonna win. In fact, we're gonna do a giveaway right now. This is a great book. Like the guys that created Basecamp wrote this book. It's their mm -hmm. third or fourth book. It's called, It Doesn't Have to Be Crazy at Work. You don't have to work 80 hours. You don't have to do half the stuff you do. Like you can run a calm company.